Hey, thanks for watching CNN 10. Our daily 10 minute shows are on pause for the summer, but we will be posting clips like this Monday through Friday until our regular programming resumes in August. So please enjoy, and to get notified of our content, please like and subscribe to this channel and keep up with us at CNN10.com. The internet is something that just seems so effortless. Everything's out of sight and out of mind. For millions of people, the global pandemic has shifted so much more of their daily life online, and this surge in usage has intensified the internet's energy cost. And the internet as a whole is estimated to consume more electricity each year than the UK, the world's fifth largest economy. I don't think there's a lot of public consciousness around the environmental impacts and carbon emissions of the internet. I think it's something that is very abstract for people to even realise there's something to think about. A typical web page produces about two grams of CO2 every time you visit it. A website's data can be stored anywhere in the world, and each time it's accessed, energy is spent retrieving it, zipping it across the globe, and also as your device interprets that data and brings it up on screen. But it wasn't always like this. It spans the globe like a superhighway. It is called internet, the net to long-time users. I mean, if you go back sort of 10 years or so, websites were very simple. They were just basic HTML pages, you know, really small files. So they were super energy efficient to actually host and to distribute that information. Whereas now we've got sort of, you know, all singing, all dancing applications that you would previously have thought of as being things that you'd buy as a piece of software. But now you can just do it on the web in your browser. Some websites see tens of millions of page views every single day, and that two grams adds up to a lot of CO2. But some designers believe that rethinking how we build web pages can counter this growing carbon footprint by simplifying websites' architecture, streamlining websites' code, or stripping out unnecessary video features, and create a greener internet. Because the whole objective in terms of lowering carbon emissions is to make things more energy efficient. You're also making them faster. You don't have to wait for the server to do as much processing. The files transfer around the internet a lot quicker because they're a lot smaller. Another streamlining strategy is a CDN. Which is a content delivery network which tries to distribute this data so that you've got multiple copies of your files at different points around the world because you're reducing those distances that the information is having to be sent over. For decades, the potential for the internet to make much of life paperless has been a great hope for environmentalists. But the hidden cost to the planet of a life online is significant and growing. By making everything disappear into thin air, we're actually creating other impacts somewhere else that are sort of behind the scenes in the power consumption. The internet is, is growing in terms of its energy consumption rapidly. The progress we're making in building out additional renewables, solar, wind, tidal and so on, is sort of being eroded by our increasing hunger for energy. To better understand this cost, Tom Greenwood has developed a carbon counting website. It is quite an abstract concept that websites produce carbon emissions, so it really helps people to get a sense of what that actually means and how it applies to an individual website. In an ideal world, you want to get as close to nothing as possible in terms of energy use. But there also needs to be an element of realism, that nobody wants to go back to the late 90s. We have not just expectations of the modern web, but we have growing expectations of what the future of that web looks like. And that's always going to be something that's more engaging, more sophisticated than what we've had in the past. So I think we need to be realistic about the fact that people expect that and they won't accept less but we need to figure out how we can do that in the most efficient way possible. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter at CNN10.com and we'll see you in August for daily episodes of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus.